Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Raymond Yang. Here are tonight's top stories. There's a respite for borrowers as HSBC and other Hong Kong banks keep their prime rates on hold. The Prince of Wales Hospital apologises after a day-old baby dies following an equipment glitch. And mainland policy makers come under pressure to step up stimulus as the economy falters. The US central bank is leaving its interest rates untouched for the first time in more than a year, saying it wants to gauge the impact of 10 previous hikes. Hong Kong banks are following suit by keeping the prime rate frozen. The Hong Kong Monetary Authority announced that its base rate will remain at 5.5 percent following the U.S. Federal Reserve's decision overnight to leave its benchmark rate unchanged. Although it's a slight reprieve for borrowers, the rate is still more than seven times higher than last year when it stood at a historic low of 0.5 percent before gradually rising 10 times with increments ranging from 25 to 75 basis points. We are talking about the high environment, it is possible to maintain a long time. HKMA chief executive Eddie Yu warned that the pause does not imply that the upward cycle is over, adding the local interest rate will likely remain high for some time. The city's biggest lenders are also staying put. The prime rate for HSBC, Hang Seng Bank, Standard Chartered and Bank of China stays at 5.75 percent, much to the relief of homeowners and others taking out mortgages. The hiatus came after the U.S. central bank confirmed that it will not bump up its key interest rate. But in a surprise to market watches, its chairman signaled two more increases. Nearly all committee participants expect that it will be appropriate to raise interest rates somewhat further by the end of the year. But at this meeting, considering how far and how fast we've moved, we judged it prudent to hold the target range steady to allow the committee to assess additional information and its implications for monetary policy. Aggressive monetary tightening is working. Inflation in the United States dropped from 9.1 percent a year ago to just 4 percent last month. But the goal, Powell said, is to bring it down to 2 percent. The Prince of Wales Hospital has apologised following the death of a premature baby after an equipment malfunction. The baby, who was born on Monday, needed a drug infusion because of a heart problem. 50 minutes after the, after the procedure started on Tuesday, staff found that the stop cock of the infusion tube was not open, preventing the medication from entering the body. The infant's condition deteriorated and death occurred 12 hours later. The hospital apologised to the infant's family and will investigate the tragedy. Health Minister Lo Chong Mao expressed his sadness. The coroner will follow up the case. The Consumer Council has urged people to take proper care of electric fans to prevent accidents. The watchdog also advised parents to keep their children well away from the rotating blades. Chloe Wong reports. During the sweltering summer, many households turned to fans for relief because they used less electricity than air conditioners. The Consumer Council has tested 12 models and found that eight did not meet safety standards. These two models, Imaflax and Sanshin, were not fire resistant. The government has advised people to stop using them immediately. Four other models had installation problems which could cause an electric shock if users removed the cover without switching off the power. The force of one model could cause injury if a child accidentally puts his fingers into the gap. The watchdog also found that the cord inside the most expensive fan could be easily damaged when used for a long period. Uh, as long as you follow the right instruction and also you maintain it, um, keeping it safe and also avoiding you know, children to touch on it, that should not create a lot of risk you know, at your home. The council added that there was a 67% difference in energy saving between the best performing and the worst model. 
Chloe Wong, HKIBC. The International Travel Expo has opened, with participants optimistic that tourism will take off in leaps and bounds, now that COVID has receded into the background. Our key partners in the travel trade are making the best use of this, fir this first forum in Hong Kong after the pandemic to reconnect, revive business, and review their exciting offering with the theme of onward to full recovery of the shows. Yang noted that 2.8 million people visited Hong Kong last month, taking the total number of visitors since the start of the year to over 10 million. Expo operator KS Tong is confident that pent-up demand for travel is sustainable. A survey he conducted showed that 40% of respondents are keen to go overseas at least three times over the next year. A property agent has been jailed for understating his income to afford paying child support. And in another case, four people have been accused of conspiring to fake signatures on a writ of summons. Maisie Mop reports. Four people accused by National Security Police of conspiring to make a false instrument have appeared in West Kowloon Magistracy. Ngan Hock Kin, who was granted bail, and 64-year-old Lin Ming Yi, who was remanded, are alleged to have fake signatures on a writ of summons on behalf of the two other defendants, Zheng Ka Chen and Ho Chek Wai, who are both behind bars. Lin is alleged to have asked Zheng and Ho through another inmate at the Lai Chi Kok Reception Center to declare that they had signed the writ of summons. The charge stated that Lin had interfered in a police investigation. She was additionally charged with perverting the course of justice. The case was adjourned to August. In the district court, bail was extended for three defendants in connection with an accident during a concert by the boy band Mirror at the Coliseum last year. A giant screen fell during the show and seriously injured two dancers. Two project managers and a technical coordinator from Engineering Impact were accused of not giving the correct weight of the stage equipment. They will appear in court again in August. Also in the district court, 38-year-old Rockman Ng was sentenced to 18 months in jail for understating his income to avoid paying a monthly child support of $2,500. He claimed to earn only $8,500 a month, but took home up to $770,000 each month. Deputy District Judge David Jern said he sends Ng to prison because his actions were premeditated and continuous. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Overseas, Greece is searching for hundreds of migrants who are missing after their rickety trawler capsized. At least 79 migrants drowned, while more than 100 were rescued and taken to the southern Greek port of Kalamata. They're under shock, so I think that uh, the medical and psychological needs of the people, as well as their uh, um, uh, um, communication with their families, to, to, to tell, that's their biggest concern. They want to tell their families that they are well. Most of the survivors who were picked up at sea were taken on stretchers to a warehouse where they were given food and medical attention. Relief officials are trying to contact their families to assure them that their relatives are safe. The vessel was believed to be carrying 700 people. Officials fear that those unaccounted for might have been trapped below deck. The trawler had left Libya bound for Italy carrying mostly young men from Afghanistan, Pakistan and the Middle East. Parts of western India and southern Pakistan are bracing for a massive storm, which is expected to make landfall tonight. Cyclone Bipajoy, which is packing winds of over 150 kilometers per hour, had been hovering over the Arabian Sea for a few days but it is now heading towards the western coast of India, where 75,000 people have been evacuated from low-lying areas in the state of Gujarat. 
The storm is also expected to hit parts of southern Pakistan, where more than 100,000 people have moved to safety. China's economic recovery appears to have run out of steam, with industrial output and retail sales for May coming in below expectations. With youth unemployment at a new high, there's pressure on policymakers to step up stimulus measures. Sachin Kape reports. After a rapid post-COVID recovery, growth in the world's second largest economy appears to be faltering. Industrial output last month rose 3.5% from a year earlier, but was lower than market estimates and April's expansion. Private firms registered only a 0.7% increase compared with 4.4% for state-owned enterprises. Consumers tightened their purse strings. Retail sales were up 12.7%, lower than the 18.4% rise in April and below analysts' forecasts. The job market triggered concern. There is a shortage of high-skilled personnel, said Fu Linghoi, spokesman for the National Statistics Bureau. There is also high youth unemployment, he said. The jobless rate in the 16 to 24 age group reached a record 20.8% last month, up 0.4% from April. The overall urban jobless rate was unchanged at 5.2%. There was no reprieve for the ailing property market, with investment falling further, dropping 7.2% in the first five months. The outlook appears bleak. The foundation for economic recovery is not solid, Fu said. He cited sluggish global recovery and a lackluster domestic demand, which is adding pressure on businesses. Sachin Katvi, HKIBC. The Hong Kong and mainland stock markets have surged on the back of encouraging interest rate news. Shares in Shanghai jumped to a four-month high after the central bank cut the borrowing cost of its medium-term loans for the first time in 10 months. The move also boosted the Hong Kong market, which welcomed the decision by the de facto U.S. and SAL central banks to keep interest rates unchanged. Techs were the biggest gainers with food delivery giant Meituan leaping 7.8%. Alibaba jumped 4.5% and Tencent 2.7%, driving the Hang Seng Index 2.1% higher at the close. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index was up 420 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent picked up $9.40, the tracker fund up 44 cents, while Meituan was up $9.90. JD.com up $7.70. AIA down 75 cents, while China Construction Bank was up 2 cents. The forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, the euros at 8.51. Pound sterling at 9.91, while the Australian dollar at 5.32. And over in Europe, the London FTSE is currently down 7 points. On to the weather now. It will be overcast with frequent heavy showers tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 26 and 29 degrees. The rain will recede gradually over the weekend, with bright spots on Sunday. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Thursday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Raymond Young. Thanks for watching. Good night.